G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and today I haven't got much, well it's quite good but it's very small, very very small. Today I'm looking at the FreeSky R9 Mini, probably the smallest receiver I have in the entire workshop. Um, it's tiny! Um, to give you a comparison to the R9 Slim, which was the other small one, there's the R9 Slim, this one doesn't work, never worked out of the box, broken, bad form FreeSky. Um, I have contacted Fresco and said, could you replace it? Nah, not even answering my emails again. I don't know. What do you do? Um, looked like we were back on track there for a while, but no, nah, they seem to have uh, uh, not interested anymore. So I went out and paid good money to buy one of these in the hope that this one will work. And in theory, this is the same piece of kit, even though everything's a little bit bigger on this one. It'll be interesting to see how they compare. Hopefully this one will work, but what I wanted to do was have a quick look at it and tell you before I try it out what I'm supposed to get, what, what I expect from it. So I'm going to have to go to the macro to review this thing. And there we go, that is the macro view. And here's my finger for comparison. It is insanely small. Designed primarily for mini quads, they say, probably the little micro quads now. Uh, but I find it amazing that, um, where's the smallest, here's the smallest 2.4 gig receiver that, oh no, there are actually some smaller ones I've got in mini quads, but um, yeah, th this, um, is smaller than virtually all my other 2.4 gig receivers, but it's 900 megahertz and it should have the same range as the Slim, they tell me, or the same range as the R9, as they tell me, according to the brochure. But what have we got here? Well, we've got, on one side we've got the RF circuitry, uh, which side would that be? That's probably the other side, and it's got a big QR code on it, so I can't see, I'll have to peel that off, hang on a minute. Actually, I won't peel it off until I know it works, otherwise I might have to send it back. <laughs> I bought this locally in New Zealand for the princely sum of $38 plus shipping, which came to $48 for this little tiny receiver. They're a lot cheaper if you're buying them off Banggood or other sources overseas. If you go to the description of this video, you won't find a link because I'm not on an affiliate scheme and I don't shill for products. So there we go. Um, yeah, it's got one antenna, as you can see. One thing that bugs me a lot about the, the um, this kind of gear is, I'll talk about it in a moment, is the antennas they're giving out of this gear. That, that could be a lot better and I'll tell you why in a moment, but basically, You've got four connectors, well, five connectors down here, which is your S bus, S port, plus minus, and an F port. I'm not sure exactly what they've got in. They've got a whole lot of thing on there. And this side, you've got four independent channel outputs. Now, I wasn't expecting that. I bought this receiver to use with a flight controller and figured I'd just use S bus. But I love the fact that it has four PP or PWM outputs here, so you can actually run four regular servos off it. You don't have to use a flight controller. That is brilliant because you will see shortly on the long range FPV project, the very, very small model I'm building will initially not use a flight controller. So if this was only S-Bus, it would be a bit of a problem. But it has four channel outputs, I can use it before I even put a flight controller on the thing. That's bloody brilliant, love that. Okay, um, it does come with a little um, JST type well, connector there and some pin headers, but no matching plug, which is a bit of a faff. Why don't they give you a plug? Maybe they just left it out of mine. I always have bad luck, I don't know. But yeah, no matching connector for that, which is a shame because without a connector you can't, I mean when you get the this receiver they give you the matching connector but on this one nothing, zero zilch, pfft, I don't know um, you know for, for $48 I'd expect to get a piece of wire with it but I didn't, never mind but I must say the company I bought it off um, did ship it very quickly and arrived very quickly because I was getting pissed off waiting for Free Sky thinking are they going to send me a replacement for the Slim? No, 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 okay I just buy it locally, save the time because this project needs to get up and going. Summer's dragging on, I want to get this thing finished as soon as possible. So I bought this and Free Sky well they can sing, I don't care. Um, right, so that's the little receiver, there's not much to say, it really is, I mean look there's piss all there, there's, there's very little involved, it's very tiny, very small. You can see why it's only I think $19 for US which is a tiny amount of money for an awfully lot of receiver in terms of the functionality. If it works, I'm going to be including it, as I say, probably in the next video you'll get to see this in action and some other cool stuff that I've got here for this, the ultra small, I'm trying to make the smallest FPV, smallest, lightest FPV model I can. And it might surprise you just how small and light that is. My Patreon supporters have already had a glimpse of this. They know how light all the gizmos that go inside it are. And yeah, hopefully they were as surprised as I was at the total lightness of weight. Anyway, that is that. So let's talk a bit more about these antennas. Let me just pull out here a little bit with the old camera. Ooh, there we go, big blurry stuff. Now, what we have here is a dipole antenna. And okay, that's quite common. I think most of the long range gear have, have just used dipole antennas. But I come from a background of RF, a, you know, an electronics technician dealing with communications. And when I saw this, I thought, what's going on here? This is a bit Mickey Mouse, but how are you going? Because 
A dipole antenna is what we call a balanced antenna. It is two sides, they're balanced, right? So the signal that comes in is, is equal and opposite amplitude on each half of the dipole. So you think, right, that's great. But what they've done is a cardinal sin. They have the coax here, this is what we call an unbalanced feeder. That means that there is not the same current flowing in the inside as the outside. The little wire up the middle carries the signal, the outside is effectively a screen. There should be no current flowing in the screen. So when you have a balanced antenna connected to an unbalanced feed line, you get all sorts of problems and losses and inefficiency. So I'm thinking, what are they doing? You're wasting signal because this part that's connected to the screen of the antenna, well, it's effectively earthed because it goes back to the screen and goes back to the earth on the board. It's really not contributing that much. It is a bit of a counterpoise, but it's nowhere near as efficient as a true dipole. In the case of a receiver antenna, that's not quite as important as in the case of a transmitter antenna, but, but these are used for broadcasting telemetry back as well. So uh, this is why there are so many other antenna options, I think. But some of those just seem to be balanced uh, uh, dipoles without a balance. Because normally what we use when we connect a, bal a, a balanced connection like this to an unbalanced feed is a thing called a balun, B-A-L-U-N. So that's balanced, unbalanced, right? That's how they get the name, bal, unbal, right? So balun. And a balun is a little thing that just converts the balanced signal, the equal voltage on e the, vo the voltage that's equal but reverse on each side to a single current flow through the center conductor. There's no balun on here, right? Now I know that IB Crazy does some stuff like put RF chokes on the outside of the the um, feed line, and that will reduce current in the screen. But it's not really the best solution to the problem. You really need a balun, and there's a number of ways to make a balun. It can be a little transformer, or you can use Bits of coaxial cable, actually. It's the same stuff here. You can make a balun out of this cable. Um, I'm going to look at, I'm just going to do some practical tests quietly behind the scenes. My Patreon supporters may get to see them. And I'm going to see if I can improve the efficiency of this antenna, both from the perspective of as a receiver antenna and a transmitter antenna. And I'm going to do it by making this into a, a making the balanced feed into an unbalanced feed before it goes into the receiver. Effectively, I'm going to try out some different balans and see what they do. It may make no difference at all. As my uh, Patreon supporters know, sometimes antennas that should work don't work. And sometimes things that shouldn't work do work. So, but I'll be looking at this. We'll see how we get on. Maybe we can boost the range even more by just using some good solid antenna basics. I don't know. Right, so that's the R9 Micro Mini. It should be Micro, but it's Mini, okay? Um, as I say, video coming up in a couple of days when I've got this in an airframe, we'll test it out see what the range is like. I'd like to compare it to the Slim, but I can't because it doesn't work, never mind. Um, and I will update you, but in the meantime, I, this is like so cool, having a receiver that small that is a full range. You know, we're talking like up to 10 or more kilometers of range, and, and which means you can make a model that's also really small. Did I weigh it? Hang on, I don't think I did. Let's put it on the scales, because the scales that don't show the blood will give you an idea of just how ludicrously light this receiver is. It's got a weight, I guess, freeze guy, oh no. Free Sky will have a weight figure that they claim for it, but it weighs the princely sum of nothing. Yeah, it doesn't even weigh anything. It's actually lighter than air. It weighs nothing. Probably that means it weighs under a gram, I think. I mean, you tap the scales. Yeah, just like, yeah, what's going on there? Zero. Zero. <laughs> By comparison, the R9 Slim with the weight wires attached weighs in at three, four grams. So. It is amazingly light, you won't even know it's on the model. Hopefully you will, because the servos will move when you wiggle the sticks, but utterly amazing. There you go, thanks for watching. Comments, anything to say, any questions, stick them in the place provided by YouTube, and I'll do my best to address them and answer them. In the meantime, stay tuned. Long range FPV project coming up real good. And if you're in Canada, pretty soon, it'll be legal for you, yay. Okay, bye for now. Oops, one thing I forgot to add because I'm old and I forget too much stuff, is that this is software upgradable, but, but it says you should upgrade it as soon as you get it to the latest version. I, I don't like, I like the fact it's software upgradable and that they're working on the software and improving it, but there are a lot of people who won't upgrade it, don't want to upgrade it, don't know how to upgrade it. It's over their top of their head. They don't want to get messing around with SD cards and wiring cables in. And I mean, let's face it, when you get it, there's no way to plug anything into it anyway because it's just got little holes you've got to solder plugs onto. I think it would be nice... Um, uh, why don't, here's, a, here's one for Free Sky. Now, Free Sky, here's a suggestion for you. If you're listening, which you're probably not, why don't you make your receivers RF upgradable? So you don't have to plug anything in, just connect it up to the power, and perhaps, I don't know, press the bind button twice, 
get it into the reprogram mode, and then to broadcast the update over the RF link to the receiver so you don't have to actually connect this physically to your transmitter or any other programming device. Would that be a good idea? I'd like people to tell me, is that a good idea? Would it be nice if you could upgrade the software, the firmware in your receivers without having to do anything other than tell your transmitter to do it? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, now it is goodbye.